Well, hello there. So I'm going to do a cowl in my berries and not stitch. So I'm going to, uh, I'll have to catch you up to me. But this is it. And it's a really, really pretty, pretty stitch. That's good definition. I'll just uh, get back a little bit. It's a little too close for you to really see. So we'll just get back a little bit there. I think that makes it a little bit clearer image. There we go. There's a lot of shine to it. So that's a really, really pretty, pretty stitch. And uh, for some reason, <laughs> the way that the yarn is going, um, we got more blue on one side and more red on the other side. There it is. And and the other side looks really nice too. You can see it there. And um, if I put this one like this, you can see it. There. Really, really pretty, pretty stitch with lots and lots of texture and really easy to do. Okay, so the yarn I'm using is Bergeret de France and it is a Harlequin yarn and it's bulky and it's in the color Mongol. Um, if you get the French version, it's spelt Mongoli. Uh, probably, I'm not pronouncing it right, I know. But um, there it is. It's a French yarn. It's made in France. And it's got a lot of pretty colors, a lot of nice shine. Oh, um, it's, con it's a number five. And its content is it's around 50-50 for wool and... Um, yeah, it is. It's 50-50, 50, 50, 50 wall, 50 acrylic. Okay, so that's the yarn I'm using. And I'm just using a three-quarter inch loom. This is the same as the big yellow one on in the Nifty Knitter. It has 41 pegs, three-quarter inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I already have a video of the cast on that I used here with another piece. So I'm just going to take you to that to show you the cast on. And then right after you do the cast on, we'll be ready to start the stitch. So we'll come back and I'll get you started on the stitch. So we'll see you in a bit. So I'm going to show you how to start this piece. And I'm going to show you the cast on and the first few rows before we start into the pattern. The yarn I'm using for this is Atlantis, uh, Estelle Atlantis, and the color is Gleam. And it's a combination of yellows and creams and uh, light taupe and copper and bronze and uh, lots of those colors in it. And it's a bulky. And it's... um. Um, I guess it's pretty close to charisma width to give you an idea of how big a bulky it is. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is a chain cast on. So what I do is I just make a slip knot. And any way you make a slip knot is fine. It just goes on the first peg like that. And we take the loom hook, put it inside the loop, and pick up a yarn and so that we have a loop of yarn here. I'm just going to keep this tight over here and then I'm going to come over behind the next peg, put the working yarn through and snug it up. Behind, working yarn through, snug it up. Behind, whoop, <laughs> behind and we caught two pegs, <laughs> snug it up behind, snug it up, and we just do that all the way around the loom. And that's a chain cast on. It's one of the crochet casts on, cast ons. Works really good. You can use a crochet hook to do this if you want. 
I find it a lot easier just to do with my hands. But if you're in a very tiny gauge loom, you might really need a hook to get your fingers in between the pegs. This uh, cast on can be used on any size of loom with the appropriate yarn for that gauge. I use this cast on with most of my pieces because I like the look of it. I do use other ones from time to time just because I think they go nicer with the work. But this one is nice. You don't have to worry about tightening any loops. It has a really nice appearance. And um, I just kind of do this weird thing when I do it because that helps me to get the right tension. But you can do it in one smooth motion too. Just the way I like to do the, the chain cast on. Get some more yarn out of here. Okay. Whoop, caught this in it. <laughs> there we go. And then I just plop it on the last peg. And then you notice there's a space here. You could also pop it on there, but I find it makes this really thick here. So what I've started doing is just ending right here when I do this cast on. And then just knit it off. And then we're just going to come over here and knit this to secure it. And then what I do, because there's only one piece of yarn coming here and it's thicker in here, is I take this loop that I had left and put it over here and then I just knit it over. And that makes it blend in better. At least that's what I think. And also this is partially secured already so it will stay tighter and not loosen up on you now, which sometimes happens. Okay, so um, what we're going to do with this stitch, and I've already done one knit stitch here, is we're just going to do a row of unit. So a row of unit right after the cast on. This completes the cast on part of it. And a unit is just over the peg like that and knit it off. If you're doing this pattern, I'd be pretty sure you already know how to unit, but just in case. And it gives you one of the, well, the real knit stitches, really, since E-Wrap is a twisted knit, and it's the same as knitting through the back loop and needle knitting. But these all give you the, the V stitch, which is the knit stitch. And the yarn has lots of nice color changes. I really like it. Oh, it's 50% wool and 50% acrylic. So really nice to work with. Unless you're one of those people that's allergic to wool. But if you're not, it's beautiful to work with. It just glides on. And we must almost be back there. <laughs> uh, if it's uh, Yeah, we're almost back there. I was going to pause it if it was still a long ways. And I will do that on some of these rows just because it's going to really take up a lot of length in the video. Okay, Oop. <laughs> and this is loose because it's this, this one right here. Okay, now what we're going to do is a row of pearl. So just go down, pull the working, pull some a loop up and do that. I'll do it slower, but you should know how to pearl. So we're just going to put 
this in just like the same way when we cast on. We came in through here. Now we're going to take this loop and pull it up just like we did with the cast on, except we're going to take everything off here and then just put the loop back on. You just put it right over like that. And that's all there is to a purl. So we're just going to purl all the way around. Just want to have a good strong non-curling base. And of course when we cast off we're going to do the same thing. Do the same row as we did here so it matches. Okay I'm going to put it on pause while I go around and do the purl. Okay so I completed my row of purl. Now I'm going to do another row of unit followed by another row of purl. So that's all we're going to do is another row of knit and then another row of purl. So what we did was we cast on, we did a row of u knit, and then we did a row of purl, and then another row of u knit, and another row of purl. So I'm just going to put you on pause, finish my row of knit, then I'm going to do my row of purl, and then we'll be all ready to start the stitch. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I did the, the second row of knit and the second row of purl. And uh, this is what it looks like. It just gives you a, a beginning like that so that that edge will never curl. Okay, so I'm back and now you've got this cast on here and the first few rows and you're ready to start right into the stitch. I started right here, right after this cast on here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the stitch and it's just done on one peg and it's a really, really easy stitch. So all we do to do this stitch is we go behind the peg and we just do a U-wrap. And then we come over the same peg and we do a, uh, we did the E-wrap. Now we're going to do a U-wrap over it. Loose enough we can get it over. And then we're going to come back around and do an E-wrap over it again. And that's all there is to it. So very, very easy. Okay, so next peg we're going to do the E-wrap. Knit it off. Come back around in front in a U-wrap, knit it off, come back around and in front again in a U-wrap, knit it off. That's it. So you do an E-wrap, come back around to do a U-wrap, come back around to do a U-wrap again, and knit it over. And you can get a really good momentum going. What I usually do, this is just the way I do it. You may not be able to do it, but I, a lot of times I knit with both my hands. But I just do my E-wrap. And then I come over with my U-wrap. And I come over with my U-wrap with my other hand like that. And then away I go. E-wrap. Come back over. And so I just keep doing that. But um, you do it any way you want. You can do it like this. You can get quite fast. You do your E-wrap. Come back over. Do your U-wrap. Do your U-wrap. And away you go. And I, as you notice, I'm doing it quite loose. So this is staying nice and loose. Doing my E-wrap. U-wrap. And this has got to be loose so you can get it over. And back again. Okay. U-wrap. Or E-wrap, I mean. Then the U-wrap. And another U-wrap. It's that easy. That's all there is to this stitch. And look at the beautiful stitch you get. So E-wrap. Come right back in front and do the U-wrap. Come back in front and do the U-wrap. E-wrap. 
back in front to do a U-wrap, back in front to do a U-wrap, E-wrap, back in front to do a U-wrap, back in front to do another U-wrap. Okay, that's all there is to it. Very, very, very easy. You can use both sides. And the way that we're going to do it, it will be so this is reversible, so you could use either side. I'm doing a very long cowl. For some of you, the length I have would be long enough already. Um, you could even just do it a lot shorter for a neck warmer, but I want a really long cowl that I can put over my head as well. So I'm going to be going for quite a while. So we'll catch up when you've got the length of cowl that you want. And uh, we will do the bind off. So we will see you in a bit. Okay, so I've got it as long as I want it to be. So now we're going to be finishing it off and casting off. Now what we want to do is we want to do the opposite that we did when we cast on. So we need to do a row of pearl. So the first thing we do is a row of pearl. So we just go all around the, the loom doing a row of pearl. And then we'll do a row of knit, a row of pearl again, and a row of knit. The exact opposite of what we did when we cast on. So a row of pearl, a row of knit, a row of pearl, a row of knit, and then we'll go directly to binding off. So uh, do the four rows. Okay, uh, I'll repeat it again. A row of pearl, row of knit, row of pearl, row of knit. Then we'll catch up and we will do the casting off. Okay, so I've done the four rows. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to do a very stretchy bind off so that we can get it looking like it does at the beginning of the piece. So I went around the loom with, with the yarn two and a half times. You can go up to three if you'd like and then I cut it. So that's how much yarn I have to do this with. Um, you can always uh, use extra yarn because you can always cut it off. But I found I never go over the two and a half times around. Okay, and so then we just get a good needle. And I've got a nice short needle with a great big eye here. I like this needle. And then we get the yarn through it. You can also use a loom hook, but I find a needle a lot easier. Okay, so we're just going to make sure our, our stitch here is tight. And this is where we're starting. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going up the stitch that we just came from. And then we're going to tighten that. And then we're going to go behind it. And we're going to go down the next stitch and just pull the yarn through. Make sure you're on this side of the loop or else you'll be pulling it through the loop and you don't want that. Okay? Okay. And then what I'm going to do is go oop, up this one once more. Because this is just my starting place. And then I'm going to go behind this one and I'm going to go down the new peg. And this is the pattern all the way now. We're just going to go down the new peg, pull it through, and tighten it and go up the old peg. 
gets easier once the yarn gets shorter. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to go behind the peg that was the new peg. A little bit awkward here for me. Okay, so we went behind this peg and we're going to go down the new peg. Pull it tight. And up the old peg. Okay, so we're going to go behind, and that's the peg that was new last time, and then we're going to go down the new peg. Whoop. <laughs> and up the old peg. And behind and down the new peg. Now if you have a yarn that frays really easy and this process frays it, frays it while you're doing this, then that's okay. You can cut that off, secure it with a knot and weave it in later and then you can just add a new yarn and go. You can uh, tie it on to the end that you cut off if it's not too badly frayed and then sew it all in later. But however you'd like to do that, that's a way to do it if you're fraying. This yarn doesn't fray so I'm using a nice long yarn. But just a tip because sometimes you'll get a yarn that w will not like the process of binding off. Um, <laughs> I seem to be tangled here in my wire. <laughs> okay, we'll cut it off now. Okay, so here we are. So if you have to stop in the process, you look at where you are and you see the yarns coming out of here. So that means that was the last one you worked. So you're going to go behind and go down the new peg. And up the old peg. Okay, and behind and down. And up. Okay, so I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit and then we can catch up. Okay, so I've got, uh, I'm almost to the end here. I have to do this a lot shorter now. Okay, so here I am and I'm going behind the peg and I'm going down. Okay, now it's much easier down and up and behind, tightening it down, up and behind, down. behind. So it's not really hard to do except uh, this one because I have a little bit of a knot there that developed. Okay and then up. Okay. 
and behind, down, and up. behind and down there you go and up and behind and down and up And behind and down <laughs> like there we go because I'm at the end so basically now I've connected every peg they're all connected so I'm just going to leave this here to actually do a knot or I could do a knot right now because that's important to um, do a knot to secure it. I sometimes do it at the end, but I'm just going to do it now. So we're just going to do a <clears throat> there, a knot. There we go. And then I will be weaving in that end, um, turning it in so you don't see the knot and weaving it in after. But now we can take the needle off and we can take our loom hook again. And then we can just start taking off the pegs. And we just take them off all the way around the loom. Some of them will be tighter. I find if I go the opposite way, it's looser and easier to take it off. So go back the way that I had just come. looks like kind of funny big loops right now but okay so there we go let me just take the loom off now and so then what we want to do is we want to stretch it I go all the way around uh, stretching it there we go uh, there's the one we're going to go in and then we're just going to always you always stretch the work that you do to set the stitches. So you stretch it every direction, whatever piece that, that you have. And then, okay, so we want to, here's our bottom, nice and stretchy. Here's our top, nice and stretchy. And now we can kind of look and compare them. Okay, so here's the cast on. And here's the, the bind off. And I'll see if I can find another place to show you where maybe the colors are more similar. Here. Hmm. Oh, there's brown and blue. But uh, they look really close to the same. Okay. Has a chain look to it. And this has a chain look to it. It be a place where you can see this a little better with a better color. Hmm. It all seems to be pretty close to the same color here. Well, maybe you can see it a little. Ah, there you go. Maybe a little bit better here. You can see the chain look and how that's the same as the chain look here. Very similar. So it matches up quite nice. And it has the same stretchiness, and that's what you want. So you want your cowl to look the same on both sides. 
and have the same kind of stretch. And then you're just going to uh, weave in your end and also the end down there if you had it. And you are done and you've got a nice long cowl. Um, I made it long enough that you can actually drape it over your head. And this is what the stitch looks like. And also I'm going to use it reversible because look at how nice the stitch is on the other side too. It's a beautiful, beautiful stitch on the other side as well. So you can wear it either way. Upside down, right side up. And on this side, that way or that way, it looks good every way that you wear it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy making this easy, fast cowl. And until next time, Bye.